Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Mona Mirai. Welcome to No Seminar, the No Summary Golden Threads live stream series of conversations with artists that do not fit in a box. For those who may not know, Golden Thread is the first American theater company devoted to plays from or about the Middle East. We are based in San Francisco, and we'll be celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. My name again is Mona Mirai. I'm a writer, theater maker, and critique from Lebanon. I'm currently a doctoral student at the Theater History Research and Criticism Program at the U University of Washington. I'll be moderating today's session of No Summary, and I am pleased to be in conversation today with Iman Aoun and Melody Brooks, the initiators of Theatre from the Streets program, um, uh, along with Lupe Gehrenbeck of Teatro La Comarca and Malika Sarabai of Darpana Academy of Performing Arts, who are also curators of the project. But before going into the project, allow me to introduce both our panelists today. Iman Aoun is an award-winning theater, TV, and movie actress. She holds a bachelor degree in social studies and a diploma in psychodrama. She started her acting career in 1984 with Hakawati Theater Company. She's the co-founder of Ajtar Theater in 1991. Iman has received various notifications for her work from different countries and international organizations and festivals including um, the fact of her being recognized as a finalist at the Gilder Kony Award in New York in 2020. She runs Ashtar International Youth Theater Festival since 2012, and uh, she is an international theater of the oppressed tra uh, trainer. Melody Brooks, our second panelist is the founder and artistic director of New Perspectives Theatre Company. She is an award-winning producer, director, and dramaturg who has been working in the professional theatre and various educational institutions for 40 years. Brooks received the 2018 Trailblazing Women and Arts Institutions Award from from Rhythm Color Associates and the Spirit of Hope Award in 2015 from, from Speranza Theatre Company for her career long support of women theatre artists. She is a board member with the League of Professional Theatre Women and was co chair of the Triennial LPTW Gilder and Cony International Theatre Award in 2014 and 2017, and executive producer of the virtual 2020 program. Hello, Melody, and hello, Iman. I'm so happy and thrilled to be here with you and to talk about. Theatre from the Streets, which is an international pilot program, creating conversations across borders. So tell me more about it, Melody or Ima. Um, Mona, thank you for having us. Um, I'll just do a quick summary of how we created the program. Uh, and Iman can certainly um, you know, add her thoughts to that. Uh, as you mentioned a couple of times, the Gilder Kwanye International Theatre Award is a program run by the League of Professional Theatre Women. And it's every three years, and it uh, supports women who are not US citizens, who are doing work that is artistically acclaimed, but that also has an impact on their communities, uh, and in particularly supporting women. And one of the things that happened in 2020 uh, was that we had to make everything virtual. And so the silver lining of that was that we were able to maintain connections to all the nominees, which had been more difficult in previous years when everything was live. And uh, in pursuit of maintaining those connections and figuring out how to use a, a, an international network, um, we had a meeting in May, uh, which was right when Gaza was being attacked. Uh, and so our purpose in coming together was to really look at ways in which we could all work together, but this was a much more immediate need. And we decided that we would have a small group try to come up with a plan for what we could do. And in the meantime, the ceasefire was declared and the small group, there were about eight of us, including Iman and uh, 
that as we talked about what we wanted our work as theater artists to do, it became clear that the issues of what was happening on a humanitarian level extended beyond Palestine. And that although Palestine was very much in the news at the moment and ongoing, um, that there were uh, in particular other nominees who were living in areas where we weren't getting the, the true story. And that there was media bias in you know how uh, the issues were presented. There was government oppression in some areas in terms of what was really going on. And that we realized that theater is uniquely suited to tell stories um that can show what's going on instead of trying to just tell people and uh although all theater is inherently political that the stories themselves would do the talking for the most part so that's the that was our initial impulse iman if you want to correct me on anything or add anything to that um yes melody uh first of all uh, thank you so much uh for uh, this um introduction to the idea uh, and I think that it was really uh, that was the, the route uh, the, that we have taken together um, and what I wanted to to add only uh, the fact that um, usually uh, it is not uh, taken for granted that people can come together uh, so uh, so often and and so uh, easily to work together on one idea. The uh, uh, what happened with uh, with this project and uh, although it was still called the a pilot project, uh, was immediately the fact that we all felt that there should be uh, an like an answer to a quest that was uh, put alive um, on our tables by uh, by the reality that we were living. So um, it, as Melody was saying, uh, Gaza was under attack when we started to talk and the Palestinian artists had sent out a call internationally for um, reaction, artistic reaction, uh, a, a solidarity point of view um, that would support uh, the, the people and uh, and their oppression. Um, and so uh, that was like the answer immediately uh, that we should do something and, and it has to be theatrical. Um, so that's the beauty of it. The, the second beauty of it is that we were able to use uh, the um, the multimedia that is that is there that uh, had made our life quite easy, um, and we got together and we started to really present these uh, these stories. Yeah, and the like the the Zoom world was lucky to have twelve sessions, and will be lucky because there are uh, four other sessions. Uh, that uh, are accessible to everyone wherever they are. And those 12 sessions, so in order to explain to our audience what we are what we are having in hand is uh, writers and playwrights from Venezuela, from India, from Palestine and from Lebanon sharing uh, their texts that were written according to the code that you have made. And if uh, we want to go back to the core, there are like three main areas of focus, which is correcting the record, combating the, uh, the hegemonic narratives uh, that promote oppression and uh, of autocratic regimes, a day in the life of people. And what will it take to make the collective humanity engaged in making a difference. So you highlighted those three main points and you made that call and you received many texts from uh, those countries. Um, how, how was the response? And if you can give us a little bit of, uh, uh, of an idea about uh, uh, the, the, the issues raised. I have attended a couple of sessions and I have read many of the texts and I have a lot to say about that. But as, as a starting point, how was, uh, how was oppression 
depicted in those texts and how you can see commonalities all over these areas between them. Um, so I just want to give credit to Iman because it is it really is a pilot program and she went first. So she had less time than um, Lupe or Malika who are doing the next date. And uh, we, we thought originally that we would record these and then just upload them to YouTube, uh, to New Perspectives YouTube channel um, and, and let the, work, the rest of the world in. But we discovered um, in both the technological limitations um, in Palestine and somewhat in Venezuela, but also that the need for the conversation was was much more far ranging than we thought it would be. Um, and so we had limited the amount of people that could attend the actual session. Um, that's been growing and we've opened the doors a little bit more. Um, but the response has been tremendous. Um, and we're, we're really excited to see where it goes from here. And I'll let Iman talk about the response that she got from the artists um, and and how you know we've seen a range of work some that's com comedic some that use satire and irony some that is very graphic um, and it's raised a lot of issues both in Palestine and now that we've uh, finished with Venezuela there is a lot of commonality because it is uh, the human story what human beings are actually experienced so Iman um, you were our guinea pig, as I like to say. It's not necessarily a, a polite thing to say, but you know, what I just also want to say too is that when we decided to do this, New Perspectives decided that we were just going to do it. Um, we didn't do it through the League of Professional Theater Women, although they are a partner. But we didn't we didn't want to get permission. We didn't want to have to figure it all out. We didn't want to. So we just started, and Iman was a, a great uh team player in saying yes and and making it happen within a question of weeks maybe six weeks or so to to get ready for it and to and to do her be the first um curator so you can speak about that if you want iman yeah of, of course um yeah that was uh, really brave uh from you as well melody because uh the, the fact that uh, you've given us uh, all the uh, technical support. Uh, and uh, and so uh, for me, it was uh, like, I had to really act very quickly and I had to uh, jump on the idea and start to call uh, my colleagues and my friends and put on uh, the call, like translated the, what, uh, had been written in English into Arabic and uh, disseminated. Um, and then different responses started to appear. And, and some uh, artists even wanted to, sh uh, to share two, three, four uh, pieces, not only one. Like some of them were so excited that, uh, that uh, there will be people hearing them from around the world. And, and they wanted so, especially those in Gaza, they, they felt like... Uh, hello world we're here and thank you you're hearing us so that that was the feeling um reminding ourselves that uh, it was a time when uh, when gaza was under attack so so, so they had uh, an urge to tell their story and uh, this is how we started so i started to collect first thing uh, came first week was from uh, three people from gaza and because they were the first to, to share. And then uh, slowly uh, others came uh, uh, into the light. And, and I think that if we had more time, we would have also had uh, more developed pieces. But uh, the pieces that were presented, maybe between the first piece and the last piece, uh, there was uh, a piece that was written, um, uh, that is the Sand Mountain, that was completely and totally different. And it was much more developed. The idea was uh, also taking us towards something new uh, and more abstract, more, more theatrical in, in, in the um, sense of, of the writing uh, uh, of the aspect. Uh, uh, while some of them were, ri were writing about their life, their daily life, uh, like uh, the woman who wrote about the incidents of uh, uh, of the attack uh, 
at her house at night. So there is a variety of, uh, of issues. But saying this, the, the other day when I was uh, hearing uh, the presentation from uh, Venezuela for two weeks in a row, I was feeling like, yes, it, there's so much communality there that as if they are speaking about uh, our life and many things are, uh, are alike just because oppression is oppression everywhere. And, and we are human beings that, that have feelings. Uh, and, um, and so uh, we want to eliminate oppression. Um, and when we raise our voices, uh, then um, we have a strong, um, a, a strong um, presentation, uh, a strong um, uh, deed to, to really uh, say it from the heart. Thank you, Iman. And uh, I have to add to your point, uh, the fact that not only there is a variety of texts and forms and aesthetics, uh, what I was able, from what I was able to read and see, I realized that there is also a variety of forms of oppressions and different layers of oppression. So it wasn't only, uh, it, just, it didn't fall into binaries of oppressor and, and uh, the oppressed in the political sense. Uh, you mentioned Sand Mountain by Emil Saba. Uh, and if uh, and allow me to give one moment to speak about Sand Mountain, it speaks of a woman and a man and a woman. All what she wants is to create her palace from sand. And there is it's a very abstract text, by the way. And uh, the end is is kind of amazing. Um, and on the other hand, you would find the oppressor of the brother, the, the religious oppression, the, 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 inter, the, 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 the oppression, domestic violence in a way or another. And you, you would find the political oppression that took place in Gaza and um, the, the Israeli attacks uh, on uh, Sheikh Jarrah, uh, the uprooting of 28 families. So we have all these layers together, uh, which is really very, very interesting. Uh, what, what are the, uh, the different aesthetics that came out? If you want to speak briefly about aesthetics uh, in that sense when it comes to the text, when it comes to the representation of violence in itself. Uh, so Iman, I think one is, yeah. one, one, oh, did you want to mount it? I was just going to say from, I just wanted to throw in here too that part of our um, goals with New Perspectives is, you know, a, a, a really educating a, a more Western audience, right? Especially the US and Europe, um, because we get such a skewed narrative all the time. And so um, it's w one of the things that 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 we the discussions that we had after the presentation of the pieces that really um, became much more wide ranging and more again the the non binary right that so many of these issues you just mentioned and that's what led us to think about the fact that we really want to take all this work and figure out what we're creating before we put it out for public consumption later on but. Um, but the, the, as Iman talks about, you know, that things might've been more developed if there was more time, it really didn't matter because the yes. content of the pieces was very moving and very powerful. Um, and, and because it was a closed group, we weren't saying this was, you know, polished work for the, you know, for the public, but that it was really about the work itself and the text and, and the messages and the stories. And I think that came through very clearly and very powerfully for everything that was presented um, in the first four weeks. So Iman, um, and aesthetically too, a wide variety of, of approaches to, to how this would be done. So Iman, I, I didn't mean to cut you yeah. off. No, 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 not at all, don't worry, Melody. But uh, I mean, um, as you said, uh, it was uh, um, a variety of, uh, uh, of presentation from, uh, from the person who uh, 
who had written about uh, the social issues and uh, like uh, in a farce mood to uh, the, the person who had written about the martyrs and uh, who had given voice to the martyrs themselves who were talking uh, after their death. Uh, and so um, there, there's, and there's also uh, in, the, um, in the piece, uh, some of them had used uh, like uh, um, more classical use of the, uh, uh, of the writing. Others had, had used more abstract uh, use of, of the writing. So, so it was uh, very rich and very enriching. But I wanted to say something um, a little bit on the side, but, but very much connected. It, it, this, um, this project, this pilot, had also reminded me when we did the Gaza monologues and exactly. we uh, disseminated it uh, all over the world. Um, the fact that the stories of the people, the stories from uh, like a uh, first person story, um, the uh, the very um, uh, real uh, emotion that comes out uh, and immediately like a, a reflection to their life, it tells a lot to the people who do not know. Sometimes we, uh, we put uh, so much censorship uh, on what we want to say and what we don't want to say as artists, because we want to appear really sophisticated on, on stage. Mm -hmm. But when you are really telling stories of uh, from the street, uh, stories of the people, uh, so much, um, uh, so much uh, like raw, let's say, um, and immediate, uh, then you don't really think twice. You just put it there. You just say it. You just become uh, real, um, really uh, authentic, if you want. And it really touches the hearts of the, pe of, of the listeners, of everyone that, that really gets in contact with, with these stories. Uh, yes, definitely. And um, what is also important uh, to, to, to highlight is the fact that Aesthetics can be found in situations where uh, there are no means at all, no means of support, no means of funding. There is a oppression, you know, because there is this idea that, hey, we are doing uh, a, a theater or a, a form of art that is socially uh, that, that that has a social objective so we want to focus on the content but I do believe and I think this was uh, pretty much found in many texts that there is a beautiful aesthetics and there is an artistic aesthetics even in uh, in forms that are socially oriented in a way or another. Uh, also, we have John D. Firestone who highlighted that we are this. We also discovered a commonality in the restricted funds available in each of the countries, and it opened up the possibility. So yes, thank you for highlighting that. And Melody, I want to go back uh, to uh, a point that that you raised around the reception, which I wanted also to, to, to highlight. How did the Western audience receive the texts uh, throughout uh, until present moment? We, we had uh, around how many sessions? Around eight, nine sessions? We've had eight sessions. So we're starting, okay. we're, our ninth sessions will be on Sunday. Okay. Um, you know, the first few sessions, <clears throat> took us a while to find our feet in terms of getting people to attend and and really signing up for it and, and coming. Um, but even within that, um, there's been a combination of artists, the artists themselves, other artists um, in the region, and particularly uh, in Palestine, and then other people from around the world through the different partnerships that we're working with. The reception has been very positive, but to be more specific, that even in pieces, you know, we, we've dealt with, because Zoom is wonderful, but there's also the issues of the technical limitations. Um, mm -hmm. In Palestine and in Venezuela, connectivity is hard, electricity is spotty, um, finding places uh, to be able to, to speak from, um, finding actors who could speak English. So 
there was a tremendous generosity, I think, on the part of all of our attendees, that no one was saying, oh, well, that wasn't very good, or I couldn't hear that, or, you know, why did their, 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 their connection keep going out? The people truly listened. And then the conversation that was able to result from that, first of all, was that we had people who could put the theater pieces in context. So if there was something that was more abstract or something that wasn't quite clear, either Iman or, or other moderators and, and in the Venezuela, um, Lupe and moderators could say, here's what's going on. And how, then when we knew that and could see that, we just let the theater pieces all go first. We didn't explain them up front. Um, so it led to people really, um, really having a, a new understanding and expressing that they did and learning. But the other thing for me that was important is that I wanted our conversations to understand the context to be able to reflect on the power of these theater pieces, but also to find some practical steps that we could take. So that when we create our follow-up to this, which now things seems to be that there will be different ways of using this material, that we can actually be saying, if everyone in the globe that watches this does this thing, do this, do that, do the other thing. And so we've had a wide ranging discussion. Um, one of the most powerful for me has been uh, an understanding of, of who the audience is when we have the finished product or what we want to do with this work. So one suggestion is really targeting universities, theater departments and universities, the next generation. Um, for them not to just understand the work as theater, but to understand the agency they can have as theater artists in making change. Um, we've had requests that all of the work be published together in, in one volume or that we do an international festival, a rolling festival, where these works across the three regions are presented, or some selection is then we represent those in a more you know polished way with more rehearsal that we do another program. So there's a lot of possibility, and and to me that's that's really exciting. And um, when we just did Venezuela, the, the last Venezuelan session was the first time in all of the eight uh you know gatherings that the three pieces were all very much about the oppression of the state directly state behavior and what was being done whereas throughout the other seven pieces even with palestine there we understood what the state was doing but it was still really about the impact on people and and or people's resistance and so it was interesting to me that the discussion from that watching those three pieces was very much about people wanting more information. That when we asked for feedback or we asked for people to ask questions and there was not a lot of them that the comments were that they felt like that conversation could go on for hours because they were learning so much and that they had never understood at all about the situation in Venezuela. So um, so that was a, it was a, interesting because the pieces still were highly theatrical and um, different stylized pieces, but um, that was the one moment. So I'm really curious to see what we get from the pieces in India, because we're less inclined to think of, of I think, the oppression in India, because for so many years, um, we didn't see it that way. But with, you know, the Hindu government and the oppression of religious minorities, but even now it's extended into defunding of artists, um, artists really being endangered for speaking out. Um, so it'll be I'm curious as to what forms they they take as well. Thank you. Thank you, Melody. I uh, may, I may yeah. add one, uh, one more sentence is is that the importance of, uh, of this pilot uh, or this project, let's say, is that it is creating a momentum, a momentum in in following uh, and in in getting uh, different countries and different artists uh, like in, in a network uh, whether we intentionally we want to create like a network or unintentionally uh, unintentionally but we, we are networking somehow together and we are uh, getting to know more of each other and of the, each other's countries and this um, continuous uh, getting together uh, in itself is an important artistic factor. 
Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, in a way, uh, what you just said falls in under the uh, the point of what will it take to operate a change, and how to, to to what extent is it important to make networking and highlighting uh, all these forms of oppression. Uh, and I have to say as well that there is here the role of Gilder Cony. What was the role of Gilder Cony in linking you together? Uh, because I know Iman and uh, also Malika, you were also um, uh, finalists uh, in the Gilder Cony Awards. So how, how, what is, uh, what is the importance of networking today? in a moment where, in a momentum around the world uh, where we are all feeling different forms of uncertainties. Uh, so the, I'm just gonna say quickly about the Gilder Kwanye Award and then, um, which was founded in 2011 by the League of Professional Theater Women. And it's named after Rosamond Gilder and Martha Kwanye who were for decades leading American um, involvement in theater and artistic exchange and collaboration with a view to the fact that on the ground, people to people, artist to artist, communication, working together and network was really the, the only avenue for peace. And it was uh, the organizations they worked with were started during the Cold War. Um, and so the idea of the award, which is really an award program, because yes, there is one person who gets the award and there's an award ceremony, but there's a range of activities of panels and discussions around it. And what, what the, the significance of that in, cre in leading to this program was our ability to maintain contact with all the nominees. There were 27 nominees for the 2020 award. Um, there were three finalists in the winner, and then um, the for the first time, it was easy to put out a call and say, let's have a meeting on Zoom. Um, not everybody can attend, not all 27 nominees are, are continually involved, but they're, we are in communication with all of them. So that's a first. Um, and, and it also brought a tremendous amount of attention to the program because it was all virtual and it was a global audience. And that's being carried forward. There is an international committee at the League under which this uh, Gilda Kwane program falls. Um, and they are really taking the reins and trying to move the idea of international networking forward with other projects. So they're a partner in this one. It's a uh, new perspectives is really um, doing this, um, but uh, there's an interconnectedness. Obviously I'm on uh, the board of the League and involved with the Gilda Kwane Award, so. Um, I think the networking aspect is is huge. And Iman, what you just said a few minutes ago is also really important about the momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think without uh, the uh, uh, the award, we wouldn't have been here uh, together, or, or this project uh, uh, wouldn't have been uh, the same. Because uh, the the fact that we were all uh, part of uh, of the uh, of the call and the award. That made it possible, but but also one important factor is the fact that we are all female uh, theater makers, and female yes. theater makers are strong in making connections. There is no uh, kind of um, like uh, rivalry there. There's uh, uh, complicity in in the work and in the vision, and that is the beauty of it. And this is what I wanted to to stress out. Yes. Yeah, and and also uh, this is one of uh, the 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 very few uh, positive aspects of incarceration modes, because we have to act in the virtual world rather than seek uh, other other levels. Uh, if you are just joining us, this is no summary. Golden Threads live stream series of conversations with artists that do not fit in a box. Uh, we are in conversation with Ima. Own and Melody Brooks around their project Theater in the Streets. And you may post questions to Golden Threads Facebook Live for our artists to respond to, and we will uh, handle them in a few minutes from now. Um, uh, Melody, uh, you already answered the final question I wanted to ask, which is uh, what's next and how can we really correct 
uh, or, or um, raise the final point, which is the role, our role as human beings all over the world. And you just highlighted a few points. And I wanted really to ask, because I am an educator, I teach in a university, and I wanted to ask about the possibility of um, sharing those texts with the students. So uh, you mentioned uh, uh, university, uh, uh, like uh, links with universities. Uh, you mentioned also publishing, possibilities of publishing. What are the other possibilities that you are considering for these texts? So one of the things um, there's, there, you know, we're, we're collecting suggestions or ideas. Um, so one is this idea of doing uh, internet, some festivals in different locations that we make the text available, um, and that theater companies around the world could produce a festival because they're, the pieces are all short. They're three to five minutes. Um, the sand mountain is a bit longer and a few, maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, but to do live theater festivals in a context of then engaging in an audience discussion afterwards and that it could be promoted either a rolling festival it starts somewhere i mean it could start even at new perspectives in new york um and and then other places pick it up um we do the idea of making the text available and publishing them um is is really attractive because we also want to be able to distill some of the things we've had talked about in our conversations what's important to understand what are some practical positive steps i mean joan firestone who is actually the chair of the international committee at the league of professional theater when she talked about that we learned about the restrictions on funding uh from us and european um funders that make it impossible for the artists to really be free to do their work so one positive thing people could do is you know, um, everybody write to the, the foundations or the people who are supplying the funding and say, stop putting these artificial barriers um, because they're ridiculous. They're like, oh, you might be a terrorist or you might be supporting terrorism or and and this is really kowtowing to this larger media narrative and the, you know, the Western government's view of things. Um, we also talked about uh, in terms of making texts available to universities, it's not just sort of handing them a, a collection of these pieces, but again, this ongoing conversation that we're having to include that and, and perhaps it could be a catalyst for university theater departments to engage their students in a similar kind of project um to to even locally because i think that that what this shows is that we we are all the world is an oppressive place right now um obviously it's some more life-threatening than others but you know I, I say even in the u.s but we've been an oppressive place for a very long time we just haven't been so public about it um that maybe they would go to their neighbors or they would do something locally and 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 try to do a similar kind of project so that the 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 ideal my you know dream as i am an idealist is that we get hundreds of thousands of people who are engaging in direct action um you know because they and 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 what we create to put on youtube because it's the um even though it's corporate media still um that it has a wide reach and that that we can put in there some you know call this number and complain about the funding you know give this script to your local theater company or support your local theater company in these areas if you can make a donation or attend their performances so that's what we still have to think through and 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 there's just a you know my brain is sort of going in lots of different directions and we we have a partnership of eight people the three curators um fania William Sousa at the Brighton Theatre in England, the League, um, uh, Malini Singh McDonald, who is with Theatre Beyond Broadway here, which is a company of very diverse artists. So when we reconvene, we're, we're, there's a new planning session um, that needs to happen, getting some other folks involved to think about what are the products that we can create from this. And also what Iman said too, um, we haven't even begun to think about the next round because this has been successful. We know better what we're doing now. So we could certainly pick three more countries or regions um, and do the same thing 
with a you know a break in between to give people time to to get organized but i think the the momentum the the connection with the artists um also with the in the conversations we've been having it's not just the outsiders but the artists themselves seeing their work uh reflected in the other artists work so that 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 camaraderie that that um you know a community of artists so it's a community of artists and we hope eventually a community of activists who who are all focusing on making change thank you melody iman would you like to add something yeah i i also would like i mean hanan in the chat uh, just uh, written that uh, uh, translation is also very important. Hello, Hanan. Uh, and uh, yes, absolutely. Um, there, there should be translation into Arabic and into Spanish and uh, and Hindu, probably or whatever language uh, possible. But, but one more thing that is important, uh, I I believe at least from where I am, um, our people never have read or seen uh, a Venezuelan play. Um, they were never exposed to uh, Venezuelan stories. So I believe that uh, one, one thing that I would wish to see when we finish is that I would do um, a focus on Venezuela uh, in Ramallah uh, to read uh, the, the place. It could, could be all the plays, but, but in like a, a, a mini a uh, festival uh, reading festival or something or even producing one uh, or two of, of the plays uh, and the same uh, for india and and that would be wonderful if we uh, exchange uh, our uh, the stories that we have uh, been uh, presenting and every country would present something to their people from the other um, from the other side that also is another uh, dimension to uh, to this project and it could add on uh, to the knowledge and to the awareness that we aspire to see and the solidarity that we are wishing to uh, to establish among artists uh, in the different parts uh, thank you iman um uh... Uh, I have a few more questions, but I will stop now because we need to make room for our guests and uh, uh, the people who are attending um, our event on HowlRound. I think we do have a question already. Uh, and it's Hanan. I'm not sure this is Hanan Haj Ali or am I mistaken? Yes, yes. Hanan is a, is the winner of the Guild of Award. Exactly. Yes. This is what I wanted to highlight. She's the winner of... Uh, the Golder Kani Award. Hanan, we are all ears for your question. Yes, I'm very happy to see you all. And uh, Mona, hello. I was very happy to know that you are uh, participating to this uh, gathering. Um, uh, I wanted to say, uh, I would begin by the last point that Iman raised. It, it is the, the same uh, uh, um, uh, suggestion that I put uh, in the chatting about uh, preceding uh, the dealing with the text with uh, with uh, a Zoom with Malika or Iman or Lupe or together to to to, to do a kind of focuses because for example for me it was very interesting to um, to know about what's happening in Venezuela especially that I saw by chance before the first session and the second session of uh, Venezuela uh, text a, a documentary about Venezuela. And I was really shocked to see the similarities between the situation of Lebanon, for example, and Venezuela. And it was very, 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 uh, for me, uh, very uh, informative and very, very essential to, to begin with as a knowledge. So the, 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 your suggestion, Iman, is, is very valid. And uh, uh, I, I can see the progression of, the, of this program. And how we began, and how little by little, piece by piece, the ideas are will 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 be will be numerous, and we will have uh, a difficulty. Maybe we'll have a, a big task to 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 read, to select among them, and to see what could could uh, could make a, a strong homogeneous uh, action uh, next action. What what could be? So I'm very very uh, uh, hopeful about. Uh, 
about the future of such uh, such initiative. So thank you all. Thank you, Hanan. Um, do yeah, we I, have... I just wanted to say one word to Hanan that, uh, and, and to mention to the people, to the audience that, with us, that uh, uh, Hanan was also, uh, uh, I mean, um, curating the, the text from Lebanon. We did not talk uh, much about uh, the texts from, uh, uh, from Lebanon um, because maybe we were focusing more on Palestine and Venezuela at the moment, but, uh, but of course we had also three texts from, from Lebanon that were all, also very powerful and, and they spoke about uh, issues that are um, either political or social um, and one of them was also about uh, the fact that we were living uh, in under the uh, um, the COVID uh, uh, situation. Uh, situation, yeah. yes. Let's, let's mean, call it situation today. Allo yeah, allow the pandemic that, that is eating us up. <laughs> allow me, Iman, to to say that in the beginning and uh, uh, through the. The beginning of the of the initiative, uh, uh, Lebanese uh, uh, participants were a little bit lost because the announcement in the beginning was for Palestine, and then Lebanon was added. And but for me, it was really maybe better to focus on Palestine, and maybe uh, an another on another level and another step would be uh, for Lebanon because. Uh, but I, I find that I find it more logical to do it like this. And just to tell you that there are two participants who uh, uh, delivered uh, two texts, uh, very, very strong, but it was so, uh, so subjective and so um, risky that they asked me at the last minute to withdraw them. So there is this kind of fear still, uh, especially oh. from, from women, yeah. From, uh, well, from, we also uh, had with one of the Venezuelan artists, they used a pseudonym because there had been an incident um, in Venezuela, a crackdown on artists a few days before we did it. And so for our presentation, they did not use their actual name because they felt it was too risky. So this is another, you know, common uh, thread already in the in the two regions we've visited um and, and we'll see you know how that plays out in india but um you know there's always the artist being under attack comes at some point in all oppressive regimes um and whether it's starting with limiting funding um or literally arresting people uh, for their expressions um and it is it is it's everywhere, right? So um, it's another reason why this program is so important. Yeah, where, where there is oppression, artists are the most fragile um, uh, individuals, artists and uh, children and women. Um, which also leads me to one of the Lebanese texts, which is by Dina Salim, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, who spoke about the green door, the panda and the pepper. This is the title of her uh, text. And she speaks about domestic violence, which was, which was really very interesting. Throughout the, the areas that you focused upon, uh, which is Lebanon, I repeat, Palestine and Venezuela, and in the coming weeks, it will be India. What is the level of domestic violence and gender-based violence? Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being aware of uh, the questions of the audience, but uh, in case uh, we don't have any questions, so I'm going to ask my question. I, I think what we've seen through the pieces and the conversations, it's a level of domestic violence is very high. Um, maybe some of it is prompted by different reasons. There is a religious element to it um, in some cases. Um, there is, um, you know, we know it at anywhere when there's financial difficulty and great distress in a community, domestic violence um, really increases. We learned in Venezuela that there's a lot of uh, young women because so many people are trying to leave the country that they are uh, fooled into thinking that they're going to Trinidad in particular um, for real jobs and they're uh, brought into prostitution rings. 
uh, many of them are murdered. And this came to light because one of the boats that was going to Trinidad sank um, and all these young women um, were killed. And so there's, there's, you know, we, we, we do three pieces each session. So a total of 12 from each region, um, but there's clearly, we've only scratched the surface, I think, when it comes to the impact on women, that's been a through line in different ways, but also domestic violence. Um, it is a crisis and, um, and we are all theater women that are working on this project. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's something maybe to dig into a little more as we move forward with the, with the project as a whole. Thank you. Yeah, and if I may add, uh, uh, I would say that um, usually um, it's, I mean, violence is a, is a vicious circle. So um, whenever there is violent state violence, whenever there is economic violence or economic uh, um, despair, let's say, and, and people are uh, packed into um, a, in, impoverished or uh, in, in a real uh, dead end situation, then they become really uh, very violent. And, and the, uh, um, the first thing that they do, they become violent against uh, the mm -hmm. segments that are weaker than, than the, themselves. And usually it's the man against the woman and the woman against the children or the man against the children. And, and so uh, the, this is how uh, domestic violence grows and, uh, and um, spreads. Um, for us, I mean, um, there are so many uh, studies done about uh, viol domestic violence, but, but one big aspect of it, the fact that uh, the men are frustrated people are frustrated but men are really frustrated and and so they are um also um they've been uh on, on checkpoints that they, they are uh, harassed so uh all the emotions they get back uh, home with uh, with the so uh, negative emotions and then they explode at home and so that's how we should really when we look at uh, at violence we should look at the whole uh, spectrum, if you want, of uh, where we are living, what, why things are so bad. Yeah, and it's not a surprise then uh, to when I first attended the Venezuela session, the first Venezuelan session, uh, there was a question among the audience who said that what's common between all the texts is the woman-centered oppression or the woman-centered world. And I can see that through other texts that I have read in Lebanon and also a little bit in Palestine. Um, do we have any questions? I do wanna just point out that not all the writers are women. Yes, we, definitely. We've had a combination of men and women, um, but yes, the, the women-centered violence or, and also women bearing the brunt of the oppression, right? Because women are, um, all the elements that Iman just talked about, but but women care for the family. They try to keep the pieces together. Um, they have to feed the, the kids and keep the house, you know, in some kind of um, functioning, you know, way, whether it's needing water or electricity or, you know, cooking fuel, any of those things that women are at the center of managing the oppression. They don't have the luxury of, blowing off steam because they're frustrated and, you know, um, going out and committing a lot of violence because they're, they're so constrained by just trying to keep it all together. And I think that that's, um, you know, across the board that whether a country like the United States is perceived as, you know, having that level of oppression, we certainly have our share and more of domestic violence here. Um, and for many of the same reasons. And so looking at, sort of the beginnings of what oppression does to people and looking at sort of really full-blown complete state oppression um, in Palestine, Lebanon and, and Venezuela is a, could hopefully be a, a warning, you know, cautionary tale for the rest of the world that thinks we're immune to this, right? Uh, Sahar has a question. Uh, Sahar, uh, 
would you like to ask the question or shall I, I'm, I'm gonna ask it. How would they envision the project coming to life in person if that's something they want to do and how it can maintain its international aspect? So we've already talked about a couple of ways in which to bring it to life, to do live theater. It is the ultimate goal. Um, one of the ways is making the text available to theater companies around the world, um, organizing some kind of joint um, uh, adventure in terms of doing festivals of either all of the pieces um, or some of the pieces. It, and Iman just talking about producing work from the other countries that are featured in this program. If she wants to produce some pieces from Venezuela and vice versa, um, and then um, where we provide the text or provide some um, additional resources, you know, maybe a, a questionnaire guide or a list of things to do or explore, that the hope would be that people would take that and do it live, do it in their communities. Um, and maintaining the international um, flavor, I think, as long as Zoom remains accessible, uh, there are other streaming platforms. This is being done on Facebook and HowlRound. Um, I think that we can continue uh, with some refinements to continue doing this just the 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 weekly, if you know, if that's too much biweekly or whatever, outreach to other areas around the globe and and have a similar kind of um, conversation just to keep going. Um, that's my thought, Iman. What do you think? Yeah, I think the last thing that you said uh, is very important to keep to keep this uh, um, like once a week or uh, twice a, a month um, meetings and, and readings uh, that would uh, by itself take us into something uh, deeper and, and uh, probably it will grow, it will slowly grow. This is how I feel. I feel that uh, we should not be pushing it uh, towards uh, uh, going somewhere, but we should be uh, uh, trying like a like a baby, uh, nurturing it uh, to to grow, and um, printing a, a volume of the different uh, or a book, whatever um, of the different uh, plays. That would be a wonderful thing. Um, going into universities, as we said, all of that is going to happen slowly. Maybe not. Uh, everywhere but maybe it will happen in one place not every place but uh, maybe each one of us coming from the different countries will choose the way to to use this uh, the material or to use the way to uh, enhance it in in their um, society so that that is another way possible as well it doesn't have to be all like uh, in right. in one way one direction but certainly um, the material needs to be gathered and it needs to be translated. That's and for sure. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you very much, Iman. We have reached the final minute of our session today. I wish we had a little bit more time to discuss further. Um, many thanks to our guests, uh, Melody Brooks and Iman Aoun. Uh, please stay connected with Golden Thread by signing up for our weekly email and follow us on Facebook. I'd like to thank HowlRound for hosting this live stream event. Recording of this session will be available on both HowlRound and Golden Thread's websites. And many thanks also to our live stream technician, Wendy Reyes and Chris Steele for managing the live stream on Golden Thread's Facebook page. And many thanks to all the people who attended this session. Um, and thank you for joining us today. Goodbye and maybe see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.